Hey guys, Dan here, and I'm doing a video pitting the OSSC versus the Frame Ice there. I'm going to go through the pros and cons of each, uh, my thoughts on using both of them, and which one I'd prefer to buy. Uh, I think you guys probably already know, but let's get into it. Now, uh, I figured the best way to make a video where I pit the OSSC versus a Frame Ice there, or an XRGB Mini, however you refer to it, um, is just by listing off the pros and cons of each and uh, leaving it up to you guys. Uh, obviously, as you can see, I already made my decision. It's the OSSC that does it for me. I sold my Frame Meister, I got rid of it. But some people still prefer the Frame Meister and for good reason. Uh, so let me just go over some of the pros and cons. I'm going to start with the OSSC because that's what's in front. And then I'll go into the Frame Meister. There's probably going to be some crossover here and there in this conversation, also, though. Uh, so, first thing for me, uh, I know some people disagree, but I think the OSSC is just easier to use. Uh, as long as you have a compatible display and things like that, uh, you, you, you come over some, you know, some of the compatibility issues, which I will get into. It's, uh, it's a lot easier. I flip it on. I pick what type of input it is and uh, what type of uh, line, uh, scan line multiplication I want, and uh, it's done. So uh, that it takes about a 25 second uh, set up time, I guess you could say. Meanwhile, on the Frame Meister, it could take a long time because I got a little profile and things like that. Uh, and then if it's, I got to set it to the right mode, and I, I just, it just had some issues. Uh, another pro on the OSSC uh, is uh, I, I kind of love the look that uh, not only aesthetically of the actual box, which we can get into uh, later, but the uh, the way the picture looks, my line multiplication is a little bit different than the upscaling that the Frame Meister does. Uh, this is a little bit more of a native look, but it looks really, really clean. Uh, it's definitely a noticeable difference. And I, I like the way that the OSSC makes the games look uh, comparatively. Uh, obviously, I don't have any capture footage, so I can't really show you, but it, it's, it's kind of a preference type of thing. I don't think one's better than the other, although in some applications, like the Frame Meister's handling of uh, 480p, 40i, OSSC does look better. Uh, Frame Meister does look a little fuzzy on those things, and I'm a big PS2 guy, so the the picture quality wasn't the best for me on that stuff. Although I do love my Genesis too, so you know, Frame Meister was great for RGB. Uh, moving on to the next pro of the OSSC. And that's going to be the uh, universal power supply that it comes with. So it's, uh, you, you probably saw it in the unboxing video, but I'll also show you right now. It does, it's, a, it's a regular, you know, wall wart that it comes with, but it comes with this little pack over here. And uh, you pick out which one you need, obviously, for your region. Obviously, I, the one for the America is taken out. But you can slide in whichever one you'd like for whatever region you're in, plug it into the wall. You don't have to worry about it. it it's going to work. Um, Frame Meister, I know some countries, they got to get a PSP Go power supply. They got to get a uh, power converter. They got to they gotta do a few things before it starts working. I actually sold my Frame Meister to someone in Australia, and they were asking me a lot of questions about the electricity and things like that. And specs off the power supply to see if it would be compatible with their electricity or they have to get go around and get something else this you don't have to worry about it. they have the proper connectors and it's a universal power supply uh, so you really shouldn't run into any power issues the uh, last pro that i could think of right off the bat um well actually there's a couple more but uh that i just want that actually i have a list right next to me but uh i love the toggle switch to turn on and off um, some of the, the writing on this OSSC is hard to pick up and I'll try to zoom in on it for you guys, but it's got a toggle switch for on and off. Now, yes, that means I can't just go up to it with a remote, press the power button and have this turn on, but, uh, with the frame Meister and it did have a remote, uh, that you could do that with. And it did have a button, like a clicky button that you could press. And unless that light was engaged, you never knew if it was on or off or anything like that. And it took a couple seconds for it to turn on and start initiating and doing the things he wanted to do this is just a quick okay we're ready to go you know give it a second to pop up on the screen select your input select what scan line you want and you're ready to go you're playing your game the frame master had a little bit longer of a setup time 
and I think this direct toggle switch is great. Now, uh, I do want to talk about the remote. Remote is very, very easy to use, but it's also an advantage and a disadvantage at the same time. Uh, this is just a generic remote that they give you that is compatible with your OSSC, um, but uh, because it is just a generic remote, it does work great, but there's no indication on here of what I need to press to do what I want to do. You have to look online, there's a little chart, I'll probably post a picture up over here on uh, what button to press to do what, and it took me about an hour to learn how to properly use the OSSC. And there's still a, a deeper function and things like that that I'm probably not even using on it. But for the most part, uh, I can use this in, uh, you know, it's a two seconds and I'm done. It's a very, very responsive remote. It's not one of those crappy ones where you're like pressing the button and trying to get it to do what you want to do. And just like the Frame Meister, someone is apparently developing a uh, sticker overlay that you can just pop on this and you'll have all the permanent information on there. So that's another thing. Uh, now we're going to roll on into the cons. I, the remote was kind of a pro and a con at the same time, but cons on the OSSC. First off, there's a couple audio issues. Uh, now I'm not talking about the quality of the audio that comes out. It's just getting audio into this, right? So as you can see, it, uh, it will support a uh, VGA or I forget the, the proper term for this port. But it, it, it supports video analog input through here. So Dreamcast, you're good to go. Uh, you have your component video and you have your analog uh, RGB and you basically just RGB SCART input over here, okay? So you can get a, J, I think you can get a JP21 adapter for this and it'll work. Uh, but you gotta know, Euro SCART is not supported. It's just RGB through Euro SCART that's supported. So if you have crappy SCART cables that someone sold you and it's actually just putting out component video, the OCC actually won't uh, take it in at all and it just won't accept the video signal. It has to be RGB via Euro SCART. So you have to make sure that your SCART cables are very, very good. Uh, I'd recommend that to begin with anyway because if you're gonna spend all this money and stuff like that on getting an OSSC, why are you gonna crap out on RGB cables? Get high quality ones. Uh, there's a few good sellers uh, that, you know, get, get the good ones. You don't want to cheap out on them to begin with, but that is one thing to note. Uh, and you do, you, audio through SCART does work, which is wonderful, and it will output via HDMI. Uh, but as you see with your component, there's no audio. What are you supposed to do, right? Well, on the newest model of the OSSC, which is what I have, this uh, audio 2 port actually has audio in and audio out. So you can flip a switch that's in here. It's a very, very hard to get to toggle switch that I have to use like a toothpick to, 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 to flip, which is another issue. That switch should be over here and actually just be a flip, like a little flippy switch, <laughs> a toggle switch. But uh, yeah, it's, it's a little hard to get in there and get it. But I have to get a special uh, audio adapter to plug into my component uh, splitter and it basically reduces the two audio RCA cables into a 3.5 millimeter jack, plug it in, and now I'm getting audio for my component video. It's a little bit of a hassle, and I, I think that they have to, I like the design because it's so small, but I think they have to address those audio issues. I, having this with a little toggle switch is not the best way, and I know audio was kind of, video is the main focus on this, and audio was kind of an afterthought on the OSSC, and you can always run your audio out to a, a outboard sound system and stuff like that, or a receiver. And that might be, that might be the better option. But for me right now, it's a bit of an issue to do that. Um, yeah, and then you also have uh, audio out via HDMI and you have another 3.5 millimeter jack. Uh, let me just swap out batteries because it's about to die. Hallelujah, got a fresh battery. Okay. So uh, another disadvantage uh, on the design of this, and it's an advantage or disadvantage. Again, this one's a small gripe. It doesn't support component, doesn't support S-Video. Now, you're not gonna really be making S-Video or component look any better. Uh, it looks kind of crappy on the Frame Meister, and honestly, it accepts it, but it's like, why are you even doing that? Uh, the only advantage for me was everything ran through one HDMI port on my TV, so you do, if you don't have those inputs on your TV, 
you're still able to put those through over HDMI. It, it did a decent job. It, it didn't make it look any better, but it was an option. Uh, OSSC only takes component video, only takes VGA, only takes SCART, which is kind of if you're buying these things, the only things you're going to want to use. I would like to see an HDMI input maybe, just to whittle everything down to one HDMI port. But uh, yeah, that, it, it, that's another issue. They're just less supported inputs on it than the frame Meister. Uh, a couple of things I do like. It's got these little switches over here, these little buttons over here. They're kind of nice. And uh, I kind of like the look of it, the aesthetic. These are other things that, you know, the DDR aren't really pros or cons. These are just my personal feelings about it. Uh, another major con that I actually I didn't write down, but it's actually a huge con, is display compatibility. Uh, the OSCC puts out very, very weird resolutions. And if your TV isn't 100% uh, okay with that, you're going to get a lot of unsupported formats, unrecognized format errors on your TV. So you're going to want to check compatibility with this before you uh, go out and buy it. Or if I did, like I rolled the dice and it didn't work in my display. I'm running two displays right now. If you watched my uh, collection video, this can be very, very temporary. Probably six more months. I'm going to have to do it, but you know, I'm moving. I didn't want to buy a new TV yet. And that's you know just something you're gonna have to deal with if it doesn't uh, if it's not compatible. They do have a return policy, but the video that I was getting out of it onto the display that it was compatible with was so good. I was like, I could deal with this for a few months before I get a new TV. It's not really that big of a deal. Yeah. So uh, that's about it for the Frame Meister. Uh, some things I do want to mention with that video compatibility. Um, I heard that computer monitors and gaming displays are a lot better on the compatibility end along with TCL TVs and I heard Vizio was pretty good but I heard that there was a patch on some TVs that makes it not great so if you do have a Vizio don't download any patches don't connect to the internet just use it as is out of the box now I'm gonna roll over to the frame ice there uh, obviously, I don't have the Frame Meister anymore, so I'm going to either leave this on screen, probably, or I might uh, even just roll on a uh, picture of the Frame Meister and uh, I'm going to go through the pros and cons. Now, the first pro I'm going to put on the Frame Meister is its universal connectivity. Now, like I said on with this guy, where you were lacking a lot of connectivity, you could plug everything into the frame I said that you want. You can put HDMI, S-Video component, uh, composite, uh, RGB SCART, uh, JP21. Now there are a couple exceptions with that. Your component video, you have to connect through a D-Link adapter. So that's an extra thing that you need to buy. Um, it was like an extra 10 bucks. Uh, same thing with the EuroSCART. It didn't support EuroSCART out of the box. I had to get a special Euroscart adapter to plug into that mini RGB port. Uh, that was another like $10 to I think $20 cost, depending on where you got that cable. But it did connect everything, did, did accept everything. Now it did have some compatibility issues with the HDMI switch box that I was using. So I ended up not using the HDMI port. Some things that people do recommend though, is if you do have compatibility issues again with the OSSC on your display, and you do have a frame ice there that you can plug your OSSC into your frame ice there and you'll probably have an increased uh, chance of having good compatibility. It's not 100%, but it's an option and it becomes a very, very expensive option and kind of cuts this out as being a budget frame ice replacement. So I don't 100% recommend that. I didn't do it myself, but I heard people do do that. Um, another thing is the wide compatibility of displays and things like that. I don't think I heard anyone say my frame Meister doesn't work on my TV. It's not compatible. I've heard it with the OSSC a bunch, but I haven't heard of that with the frame Meister. Um, another pro of the frame Meister are, is that it has profiles. You can have an SNES profile, an Xbox profile, 
uh, you know, any console you want. You can just make another profile for it. You can have multiple profiles for a console, depending on what type of game you're playing and at what resolution it's outputting. But the profile system on there isn't very, very great. For the first part, you can have profiles, load them, but then there's like another setting you have to also enable to make it look nice. Um, on top of that, there's a certain amount of s profiles that you can store. It's not unlimited and you're probably going to want more. I believe it's 13 and you're probably going to want more than 13 profiles on your uh, frame meister. <sighs> Sorry about that. Um, still a little sick, so breathing gets a little hard sometimes because I can only breathe out of my mouth right now. I'm like still so congested. But uh, yeah, I want to get on with this video. So yeah, profiles, limited in number. And they're still, they're not 100%. It's not like you select a profile and you go. It's, uh, there's a bit of a process with it. It takes a while. You have to load it a special way. It's kind of annoying. Uh, another con on this is that the menu system sucks. First off, it ships in Japanese, which I understand it's a Japanese product. And it's meant for people in Japan and things like that. They do have an English patch, but that English patch is not very good. It's it, it, it's it's clunky to navigate. It's just non-responsive sometimes, and it's it's very very confusing. And the settings on it aren't great. The OSSC is better equipped. Yes, you don't get an on-screen menu, but you're looking at this little screen over here, and for the most part, you can do anything you want on it pretty well. It's nicely legible. You can patch it through the front. There's a little SD card slot. You see with the little SD card sticking out, I can just pull it out. I can patch it if I want. It's pretty easy and it's pretty idiot proof. I know some people say this is harder to use. I completely disagree. The OSSC is 100% easier to use than the Framemeister for its menu alone. Let alone that's the two button functionality of it, right? So let's say I just want to, I'm using a uh, Super Nintendo RGB SCART. That's my input, right? So I'm going to hit input one for RGB SCART. And then I'm going to hit TVAV and I'm going to hit four, right? For my TVs because I want a uh, four times uh, line multiplication. My current Vizio doesn't support five line. So I use four line, which is the highest one I can get. And it looks great. Uh, that's all I have to do. So one, dun, dun. I'm playing my Super Nintendo and it looks amazing. That's all I have to do. And uh, that's the way I have it. That's the way I had it set up. You know, it took me an hour to learn and how to set a couple up a couple things on here. But besides that, I'm done. There's no uh, crazy menu navigation every single time I want to play a game. A lot of times I'd have people over and I'd try to start up a game. It would take me like 10 minutes to get my profile loaded, to get the right aspect ratio, do all this stuff. It's really, really clunky to use. And uh, on top of that, I'm a PS2 guy. I already said this to you guys. I do a lot of 480i, 480p gaming. On the frame meister, it just doesn't look as good. It's sharp, it's, got a, it's not that sharp. It's got some like fuzziness to it. it. It's just, it's got a blur on here. This just does a better job of handling it, in my opinion. I think it looks better. better. Another disadvantage is, again, is the remote. I know I kind of, use the remote as an advantage disadvantage on the OSSC, it's not good on the Freemeister. I felt like it was unresponsive sometimes. The uh, layout was confusing. Yes, I did get the sticker to translate and it just still didn't, it didn't do it for me. I just, I wasn't a fan of the whole setup and stuff like that. And it's, you know, it, it's an expensive system. I, it's, again, it's another cost, uh, uh, co another con. I put cost down. It was a lot more expensive than the Framemeister, and it, it just didn't work as well. This is so versatile and user friendly that the, the Framemeister is just, it, it was just too much money. It's like an extra hundred bucks, I think, for the Framemeister. And yeah, it's an officially produced product and you have to import it and all these things. These are just more disadvantages. People might use those as excuses as to why. I'd say it's an extra disadvantage. And one last thing, I'm putting it as a con because it's increasing the, uh, the demand because there's less supply of it. They're no longer producing the Framemeister. 
that's it. Whatever's out there is out there. So if you wanted one, go on eBay. Uh, Solaris of Japan might be selling them still. I don't know. I know I had one of the last runs of it. And it's, you know, where are you going to find it? eBay? I know I sold my Framemeister for like 100 no, not 100 $340. And the guy paid $40 to have it shipped to Australia. Like, are you kidding me? Got, I, I, he paid $400 for it. And like, I've had other people message me during the auction. Why are you selling this? Uh, and they'll ask me questions about, you know, like, does it not work? Things like that. They're like, want to know why I was getting rid of my frame. I said, I just, I told them I bought an OSSC and I'm so much more happier with it. I don't need the frame. Meister anymore. Yeah. That might not be the smartest thing to tell people when you're trying to sell it. But a lot of people were like, what, what's an OSSC? They'd look around, they do some research and go, Oh, uh, yeah, I'm not going to bid on it anymore. I'm going to remove my bid and I just want to buy an OSSC instead. That happened to me a lot. I better pulled out a lot and you know what that was fine with me because I, I wanted people to make an informed decision while buying this stuff and uh, yeah that's that that's as far as I'm gonna go on that one thing I did want to note on it I wish these letters on here I'm gonna zoom in you can see little letters on this right oh let me let me focus because now it's of course it's not focusing you can see the little letters that are etched in over here. They're perfect for being up close. Oh, why is it not focusing? There we go. I don't know. It just doesn't want to focus. So you see the letters. They're somewhat legible, but they're kind of hard to see. I wish they would have uh, it's silk to this or screened something to make it uh, white so this way you can just see it better uh, obviously they chose not to do that and that was probably a cost issue if I had to guess that would, that would just raise production cost on it and uh, they try to keep cost low you know uh, could, could you do that yourself if you wanted yeah if you want to just print labels and put that on there that would be fine someone made this this is not some in the factory you know production product someone's making this and you know it's gonna have a couple of quirks with it uh, one thing that you could do is you can re even remove this top plate if you wanted to this is kind of just completely optional if you can see the way I've been tilting it there, there's another plastic plate on top so if you did want to remove this you could if you already knew all the inputs and everything you don't have to I'm happy with it uh, if I was to choose OSSC all day, I'll deal with the compatibility issues. I'll get a better display. You know, uh, I, I, there's only, there's only more potential for this frame mice there. They're not putting out more patches for that. They're not doing anything else. This is always being developed, always being bettered. I, I, I would get in honestly. Um, I'd like to hear what you guys think. I would thank you guys for watching. I know this is a bit of a ramble and there's a couple of breathing issues with me being sick and everything, but uh, I appreciate you guys watching the video, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Thank you guys for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. There should be two videos up above that you guys should be interested in, and uh, tell me what you guys think. Do you have the Frame Meister? Do you have the OSSC? Do you have both? Which one do you like more? Uh, interested in what your guys' thoughts are, uh, and if you agree or disagree with mine. Bye.